Hey, this is a screencast series called Vim on Alphabet. My name is Josh Branshaw, and this is episode 18 in the series. In this episode, we'll be looking at the curly braces. First off, the curly braces can be used in normal mode to motion backward and forward over paragraphs. A paragraph is a block of text that follows any empty line. We have many of those in this file, so let's try it out. Hitting close curly several times, I move forward through the paragraph objects. And then hitting open curly, I move back through them. Motions are most powerful when combined with other commands, so keep this one in mind as you're editing files and looking for more expressive ways of manipulating the text. Next up, curly braces represent a pretty common text object in code. Any C style languages have blocks of code that are delineated by opening and closing curly braces. There are a lot of things we can do with that. Let's try some of these out with this JavaScript example. Inside of this block, I can hit VI curly, which visually selects everything inside of the nearest pair of curly braces. Similarly, I can hit DI curly, and that will delete everything inside of the nearest pair of curly braces. Let's undo that. If I want to copy this block of code for use in another file, I can hit YA curly to yank the entire thing, curlies and all, into my paste buffer. And you can see there that I have yanked all seven of these lines. If I'm in the middle of a large function, I can quickly move to the edges of it with these next two motions. Hitting open bracket, open curly, the cursor jumps to the opening curly brace. I can alternatively jump to the end by hitting close bracket, close curly. And now that my cursor is positioned on the curly itself, I can toggle back and forth between the matching ends by hitting percent. And now for the last use case. Curlies are used in pattern matching to define a range of desired matches to find for the preceding atom. We'll make some sense of that with an example. But first, as a quick overview, I can define a range like here between 1 and 3, which says that it is an acceptable match if the atom appears between 1 and 3 times. I can also leave the contents of the curlies empty, which means that it will match 0 or more instances of the atom but you might as well just use star in that case. You can see the help files for more variations, as well as an explanation of what it means for the matching to be greedy or not. Let's look at that example now. Say I'm looking for function declarations where the function names are a bit too short. Using backslash w, I'll match on any word character, which will work for finding function names. I can then add in this curly brace modifier. Leaving it empty, I'll match on any of these function definitions in the file. Running that back, I can instead define the range as 1 to 3, which will only highlight the function names that are a bit too short that I might want to consider making a bit more descriptive. That's it for this episode. Give the help files a look for more details on curly braces, and in the next episode, we'll look at the bracket characters.